All right. That's uh, what I always say. <laughs> Got to come up with a different beginning word, like hello or howdy, something. Or maybe I'll just continue to say, all right. Uh, it's Monday, August 14th, 9.06 a.m. We are getting into John one thirty-five, uh, which is Jesus finally arriving on the scene. <clears throat> We've been leading up to his arrival, talking about him kind of conceptually, where he came from, who he is, learning about John the Baptist, his purpose, and and talking about identity and um, I actually had a, a cool thing um, with some folks this past week. We had a gathering and just kind of talking about some of the things that I noticed in John about identity and spent some time um, seeing what the you know the, the Bible says about who we are in Christ and then also asking specifically for the Lord to reveal to us our um, specific personal assignment, like what he's created us to do and how he's created it to do us, created us to do it, and writing that down and just kind of an exercise and listening and hearing from the Lord. And it's a really beautiful time, and <clears throat> a lot of people I feel like got real clear instructions and words for this moment in time. So I would, I would encourage you to do the same, just spend some time just asking, you know. Would you have me do in this moment, in this hour, for whatever your will is and what you're looking to do, and and they might be surprised what you hear. Um, let's see, a couple things. Um, I have a new single coming out September first. It's called Blue Skies. Keep an eye out for that. And then uh, I think Thursday this week I'm going to release. Um, or I'm going to do a live webinar, just kind of talking about songwriting and music production, creativity, that sort of thing. So I'll be posting a link and sending out an email on my website where you can sign up and then we'll get that going. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely follow me on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, any of that sort of stuff, and I'll be posting about that um what else i'm gonna be in raleigh this weekend doing worship at a conference called teach my hands to war a friend of ours uh, tamika who we met at a uh, deliverance conference is putting that on asked me to come excited about that so <clears throat> if you're in raleigh maybe i'll see you there um, all right, well, let's get into it. Verse 35, I'm going to pray, and then we'll get into it. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that your word um, is like seed. It's planted in the ground, and when it plants, and when it's planted, it grows and goes forth and reaps uh, a more bountiful harvest than anything we could do or anything we could uh, study or read. And we just ask that you would uh, reveal the depth of who you are, the depth of what you've, this world you've created, who you've created us to be, and I uh, just pray for revelation in, uh, in that in Jesus' name. All right, verse 35. <clears throat> so the, the last scene we came out of is John baptizing and people coming to ask him about who he is and, and then talking about him seeing Jesus and saying, you know, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So it says, again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus and uh, as he walked along and said, look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples, so this would be John's disciples, heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. So right away, they... They were. They must have been prepared. You know, they were following John around, listening to John and uh, what he has to say. 
And John's like, look, there's the guy that I've been talking about. And uh, these guys did not hesitate. They went and followed Jesus. And um, I think that's a very powerful image of what it should look like for us. Um, um, when someone points to Jesus, you should you should follow. <laughs> you should go uh, right away. Stop everything you're doing and go. And you know, I think the the, the message here is that the moment you see Jesus, the moment you hear about Jesus, the moment the moment that you encounter him. The only the only appropriate response is to go and follow him, and you know, a lot of times people think they've got to do a bunch of stuff to kind of clean up their act or whatever. Oh, if I want to follow Jesus, um, I think there's a difference in following Jesus and becoming a Christian. Following Jesus just requires, you know, putting your eyes on him and putting your heart towards him and asking him to guide your life becoming a christian you know can be perceived as a whole bunch of other things you know you got to do all these things you gotta you know not necessarily bad things but they can become very you know i think this sometimes this off-putting people are like oh i have to do xyz now because i'm because i'm gonna become a something you know, I'm going to join a religion. I'm going to do, you know, and I don't think it has to be that complicated. You just follow Jesus. You see him, you hear what, who he is, and you follow him. And just see what happens. You know, like, it's going to be good. It's, it's going to be um, it's the best thing that you could do, you know. And there's no kind of uh, guarantee that it will be... Uh, roses and rainbows or whatever, but it will be the greatest adventure you'll ever go on. And, um, you know, there will be ups and downs. There will be hurdles and obstacles, but you will have joy and you'll have peace and you'll have um, a refuge through any storm you would encounter. And you'll also en en enjoy, you know, um, the Bible says there are uh, eter eternal pleasures at his right hand, I believe, and, you know, that he is the author of pleasure. He is the author of joy. He is the author of anything good. So there is all, all of that in him. But, you know, um, it's, it's not a formula. It's not a, you know, do this and you will get X, Y, Z. It's just follow Jesus, follow Jesus and see where he's going. You know, and so it's kind of interesting, you know, what these guys say in the next moment. Because Jesus says, and Jesus turned and saw them following him and asked them, what do you want? Some other translations say, uh, what do you seek? Um, and talk about a, uh, a loaded question. I mean, like, it's like standing at the door to eternity it's like you know i can't imagine a more powerful question with more potential and jesus looks at you and says what do you want what is it that you're seeking you know what what is it that you are looking for in this with me you know and um you know it could be that he's at you know testing their motivations or something like that but i think it's you know, I, I do think it's, you know, um, simple in its nature. Uh, it's like, what do you, you know, you're coming to life. It's life himself, love himself, um, eternity himself. And what do you, when you come there, what do you, what do you want? You know, I recently was listening to a podcast by a guy named TJ Malkanji, and he's talking about prayer. And being specific and asking the Lord for specific things. You know, he tells a story about a guy who is asking the Lord for a, a bike and a desk and a, a chair, you know. 
and uh, he was praying pretty generally for a while, and then he's like, "Ask the Lord, you know, why haven't you answered my prayer?" And he's like, "Well, what kind of bike do you want? <laughs> what kind of chair do you want? What kind of desk do you want? Like, there's some, you know, um, desire." It seems like a desire in the Lord for like real intimacy. Like, what are you, uh, what are you looking for? Like specifically, like let's get real in this thing. You know, there's no, there's no uh, shallow nature to this relationship with Jesus. This dance, it's 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 kind of like, how much do you want? You know, you want it all. You want you want to see how. <laughs> it's like uh, it reminds me of the Matrix, you know, the red pill, blue pill moment. Like, you want to see how deep this <laughs> rabbit hole goes, or do you want to just kind of stay and, you know, are, are you interested in uh, just kind of picking off the surface and and and, um, you know, just kind of staying staying above ground, you know, and uh, so they answer him he says. Uh, they answered him, Rabbi, which means, uh, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And I've been uh, kind of meditating on this this morning as I've been reading it, because I'm like, man, that's the question that they <laughs> they answered with. It's like he asked them what they want. They could have said anything. They're like, well, where are you staying? But the more I looked at that, I, I kind of <clears throat> um, realized some things, you know, um, Number one, they answered him with a question, which I think is is interesting because a question, uh, like if they had answered him with a statement, then the conversation kind of would have ended. It would have been transactional. Uh, what do you want? Uh, how about a million bucks? You know, uh, what do you want? Uh, how about a new job? You know, uh, what do you want? Uh, how about um, a wife? What do you want? How about, you know, a new guitar? <laughs> you know, like, okay, great. Here's your guitar. Have a nice day, you know. But what they said was, where are you staying? You know, number one, it's like, um, what we want is to engage further. Where are you staying? Aha. It puts it back in Jesus's court. They want it. It's like, what, you know, what, what else, what else is there, you know? question that leads to more engaging more conversation a dialogue but the question they ask is like where are you staying where are you spending your time where do you live where are you another translation said like um, where where are you abiding like where are you <clears throat> where do you exist that's where we want to go we want to jump into that space um and he said to them, come and you will see. I mean, you know, <clears throat> I think there's a lot more going on there than just, you'll see where my house is. <laughs> but I mean, even in that thing is when Jesus speaks, it, it, he's speaking with worlds, you know, there's worlds in his words. He said to them, come and you will see. Like talk about the understatement of the century, you know, like <clears throat> come, you know, follow me and you will see. Um, you will see clearer than you've ever seen before. You will see things you've never seen before. And you will see uh, into Father's heart. Uh, you will see into the heavenly realm. I mean, like, th there's so much there that um, I think if, if you're just, you know, coming to Jesus with surface expectations, you could miss. But... And so they said, and then, you know, then they have, then they have the option of the response. So they went with him and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for, it was about the 10th hour. And so they said, all right, we're in, you know, let's go. Um, and so here you have the first two disciples and the first encounter. And you'll see that he, each person he encounters, he has a different exchange with. Um, verse 40 says, one of the two who heard what John said and as a result followed Jesus. Uh, 
was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first looked for and found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which translated means the Christ. So his first response was, I got to go tell my brother. You know, and I think, um, you know, the, the Great Commission is, you know, you'll see later on, go and make disciples. But that should be our first, you know, what is it about Jesus that he encountered that made him go like, I got to go tell my brother. No, I got to go tell my, my, uh, my family. I've got to go tell my friend. I've got to go, um, I got to spread this up, information around. Um, we found the Messiah. We found him, you know, he's here. Like it's time to make a decision. It's time to no looking back. Let's go. We found the guy. Come on. You know, so he goes and gets his brother. Andrew brought Simon to Jesus, verse 42. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, uh, which means uh, a rock or a stone. So when Peter, um, or Simon, first meets Jesus, Jesus looks at him and says, um, You are Simon. This is who you are. Right? This is who you are, or this is who you were, and now you're going to be this. Because when you encounter Jesus, uh, there is a transformation that happens. There, there, there's, you, you are kind of unable to, I mean, if you, you know, if you come to him with pure motivation, or if you come to him looking for him, you will walk away, uh, from that encounter, changed, transformed, with a new name. He'll give you a new name. Uh, you know, you might think you are this, or the world might say that you are this. You know, you might think you are, you might identify as uh, your name. You might identify as the son or daughter of XYZ, um, brother or sister of XYZ. You might identify yourself <clears throat> as somebody that works at such and such um, occupation. You know, you might identify as your your work, your talents. But Jesus comes along and says, "Okay, this, I see this is who you think you are, and maybe who you are or who you were. But now you're going to be this." He gives you a new name, and that new name is going to be the, the the truth of who you are. He's going to show you the truth of who you are. He's going to show you, because he knows who he made you to be. He knows um, who you actually are. You might think all these other things, but Jesus sees you as you actually are and how you actually can be. And if you allow him to transform you, if you agree with him, then um, your life will never be the same. And so this is, you know, these are, what we're kind of witnessing is these kind of defining moments of these people's lives. The first moment you, you see and follow Jesus is a beginning of a transformative journey. Like, you know, there is no other that compares. So now he's got, you know, a few guys around him. He's had an encounter with them and here comes another one. It says, the... Verse 43, 43, the next day Jesus decided to go into Galilee, and he found Philip, and he said to him, follow me as my disciple, accepting, this is the amplified version, it just says follow me, but the amplified adds, as my disciple, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walking the same path of life that I walk. Now, I think that would have been the understood implication when you have a rabbi, um, and you follow the rabbi, that would have been the agreed upon arrangement, like, you know, and these would have been guys that I don't know would have had the opportunity to follow a rabbi, I think, probably in, in their day, um, you know, these are kind of like blue collar guys, I think, my understanding, and there would have been, you know, they would have been out in the sun, they've been working, especially uh, Peter and his brother, you know, where I believe were fishermen. Um, 
so you know just just the opportunity to follow a rabbi i think maybe would have been kind of uh amazing an amazing opportunity for them in and of itself so let's see verse 44 now philip was from bethsaida the city of andrew and peter philip uh you know he just says to philip follow me and i guess he 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 does there's no more inter, uh, interaction that's uh, described here. But he goes and finds Nathaniel. Another response, uh, like, all right, I, well, I got to go get my, my friend and tell him. And he says, we have found the one Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about Jesus from Nazareth, the son of Joseph, according to the public record. So He's like, we found the one. And what's interesting here is he says the one Moses in the law wrote about. Now, um, seems like, you know, it, it's like th- this would have would have had to been re- revealed to him. Because um, I don't know, I mean, I don't, I'm not that familiar with what in the law or what Moses wrote about that is so... Um, on the surface so clear of like, oh, there's a Messiah coming. Now the prophets, I know about that. I'm not saying there's not, I just, the prophets, that's that's an obvious one. There's tons of stuff about the Messiah, but the but the stuff that would be in the law or stuff that Moses would have written about would have been a, a probably more hidden or metaphorical or, you know, these things uh, with regards to sacrifice. So um, Philip actually has eyes to see that Jesus is actually, he's all this other stuff too. He's the one that Moses wrote about, and he's also the one that prophets wrote about. So he's able to see who Jesus is, and he goes and tells his friend, you know, Jesus is from Nazareth, uh, the son of Joseph. Um, and so Nathaniel's like, <laughs> he's like, can, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, it's like, you know, uh, the equivalent of like, you know, whatever the rough part of town is in your neighborhood. It's like, wait a minute, he was born where? You know, like the Messiah. You you saying you found the Messiah and he was born, you know, over over, you know, you name it. What like just think of like he's born in the gutters? Like, what do you mean? Like and and Philip's like, just just come and see, you know. <laughs> come and see for yourself. So Nathaniel gets up and Jesus sees him coming and says another uh, interaction of like what, you know, these, I think just find these so interesting What Jesus, the first thing that Jesus says to these guys, he says, here is an Israelite indeed, a true descendant of Jacob in whom there is no guile nor deceit nor duplicity. Now it's an interesting thing uh, he says here, um, I mean, it does seem to imply, you know, like he just got done saying, it's kind of, it seems like he's an unfiltered guy, like, you know, doesn't hold back kind of thing. And it's almost like Jesus kind of just sees him for who he is. Like, here's a guy in whom there's no guile, nor deceit, nor duplicity. Um, seems to be, you know, affirming him and saying, look, this is, this is a guy who, um, this is a straight up dude, you know, he's not trying to fool anybody. He's just calls it like it is. And you know, that here is an Israelite indeed, a true descendant of Jacob. Um, be curious what he meant about that, you know, as far as here's someone that, um, okay. So this is interesting. So he says, here is an Israelite indeed, and it amplified adds a true descendant of Jacob. You know, I guess what's interesting is what he's about to say to him. Uh, and I'll, I'll point it out in a second. But uh, Nathaniel said to Jesus, how do you know these things about me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were still under the fig tree, I saw you. Um, and based off of this, he says, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So something, um, you know, the chosen does a really good job of like, you know, uh, depicting a situation in which 
Nathaniel is under a tree and he's at his wits end and he's praying to God and, and he's, you know, he's doing everything right, but this business is falling apart and all this kind of stuff. No, the scripture doesn't say that, but there, it, it implies that there's some reason that when Jesus says this, he, his eyes are opened. <clears throat> and I, I do like that idea in that maybe Nathaniel was crying out to the Lord and Jesus would not have been able to hear him unless he was God, you know, unless he was the Messiah. And this is what triggered, wow, this, this is the, this guy's the real deal. He, for some reason, you know, he, maybe he's a more logical guy, you know, and Jesus is like, well, I'm going to give you proof. And then he says, wow, like, okay, you, you've convinced me. And Jesus kind of checks him and says, oh, uh, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe in me? It's like, oh, is that the, is that the thing that's, that makes you believe? Well, you're about to see, it says you will see greater things than this. And here's the thing that I was pointing out earlier. <clears throat> Here is an Israelite indeed, a true descendant of Jacob. Because what he's about to say alludes to an encounter, um, that Jacob first had in which he says, um, oh, surely the Lord uh, is in this place. And I, I was here the whole time and I didn't know it, which is, you know, kind of the, the, the idea of Jacob's ladder. He sees angels ascending and descending. And so Jesus says here, oh, is this, is this why you believe you'll see greater things than this? And he says to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, the bridge between heaven and earth. So he alludes to <clears throat> a situation in which really uh, define a defining moment in Jacob's life. Who, you know, Jacob, his name uh, was changed to Israel and uh, is the founder and father um, of the, the Jewish people, I guess technically Abraham is, but as far as their name, the Israelites comes from Jacob, his name, um, and this encounter he had, and he's basically identifying himself with this situation in which Jacob first said, oh, wow, like the, the Lord is here in this place, and I didn't know. So he, again, he's um, pointing out and, and identifying himself with the Most High God um, and saying, Basically, you haven't seen, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet, dude. <laughs> like what you're about to see uh, is going to blow your mind and you're going to see things that you couldn't imagine and you're going to see things in the spirit and you're going to see heaven open and the things that you're going to uh, experience and see with me are going to be uh, the workings and inner workings of heaven and angelic realms and uh, that's what you're in. That's what's in store. And I think this is a great introduction to um, a life with Jesus. It's like these, you know, what's great about the scripture is it really, like if you come to it, like Jesus says, what do you want? If you come to it, because it, it, it is the word and Jesus is the word. And when you come to the scripture, you're coming to Jesus. You're coming to the Lord. You're coming to encounter a thing that is alive. Like it's not just words on a paper. It's like, it's like coming to a doorway to eternity and opening it and going, welcome. <laughs> like, Lord's like, welcome. What do you want? What you looking for here? And then Jesus, you know, gives us, you see these encounters with the, the first time his disciples meet him and their responses, you know, like they go and tell others, I got to tell my brother, I got to bring my friend. Um, and you see Jesus encounter them and say, I, I know who you are and I'm going to give you a new name. I know who you are and I'm going to um, honor and, and, and affirm the goodness in you. But I'm also going to say, come along on this journey and what you're about to see is going to blow your mind. Um, it is... You're going to see, when you come to Jesus and you say yes and you walk with him, what you're going to see is heaven open up and the angels of God ascending and descending. Uh, you're going to see miracles. You're going to see healings. You're going to see things that um, defy uh, the minds of, of men and women. You're going to see things that defy what you think about this realm of 
three-dimensional space, you're going to see and experience things that are uh, impossible, you know, but with God, are, all things are possible. So I think that's a pretty solid intro to Jesus. Like, are you interested? If you're listening to this, and it's the first time you've heard this, and you're thinking, maybe, yeah, do I want to follow Jesus? Do I follow Jesus? Do I know Jesus? I would say this is a great moment in time to get on your knees, uh, get on your face, um, close your eyes, whatever you have to do and say, Jesus, I'm in, you know, because here's what's before you. Like, do you want, like, what do you want, first of all? Second of all, if you're in, you're going to see things that are going to blow your mind. You're going to experience things that are beyond what you could imagine. And what's in store for you is the heavens opening and all that uh, exists there being experienced here. And um, that's what the work is. That's what the day-to-day -day is. That's what the life of a disciple of Jesus is, engaging in heaven's business. And so uh, I just would say, what other decision could you make? It's like, where, you know, again, like what you got something better to do and besides this, I would, I would venture to say, I can't imagine there'd be anything else. So, um, father, right now, I just pray anyone listening to this father, you would just draw them in. They would experience your love. They would see what lies before them. You would awaken their, their minds, their hearts to you. And they would say yes. And, and that they would, experience your spirit lord you would pour out your spirit on them they would feel and and see and experience the fullness of your love for them the the, the fullness of your power and they would walk in a new way in a new day a new life you would give them a new name a new calling and it would change everything about them and it would begin the greatest uh endeavor of their lives and uh, thank you for the miraculous things that they will see and encounter along the way, transformation. And I just thank you for what you're doing in this world as we watch more and more people awaken to who you are and uh, more and more of uh, heaven opening, more and more of your angels coming in and doing uh, your work and uh, your plans on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen. That was a good one. That was a good... Uh, that was a powerful, powerful uh, section of scripture. I like that. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll uh, see you on the next one.